Aparajita Raja, and I am one of the hosts today. So five years ago, a seed was brought to Hyderabad, India from Germany with an intention to support ZF Global Development Team while enabling the company to accelerate local product development and support ZF automotive and non-automotive operations as well as customers in India. Today, this, that seed has grown into a beautiful tree that nurtures 2,900 associates. Here is the journey of the ZF Tech Center India in the last five years. Let us take a look at the contributing to the growth and success of ZF. I'd now like to invite Mr. Chris D. Baum, Vice President for HR in India and Global Domain to welcome the gathering. Thank you, Agabari Jita. Thank you. Um, just putting on my glasses. Uh, Namaste, Hyderabad. I am delighted to welcome all of you in person. Today marks the inauguration of our new tech center, India, at Hyderabad, and we are proud to host it in your presence, both physically and virtually. I would like to extend a very warm welcome to Sri Kati Ramarao. Honorable Cabinet Minister for IT, Electronics and Communication, Municipal Administration and Urban Development, and Industries and Commerce Departments. Mr. Jayesh Ranjan, IAS, Principal Secretary, Governor, Government of Telana, Telangana. Mr. Amanat Reddy Atmakuri, Chief Relations Officer, Government of Telanaga. Our distinguished guests from academia, Special Economic Zone officials, members of Society for Cy Cyberabad Security Council, guests from NASCOM and media, and all others who have supported us to make this event a reality. We couldn't have done it without you. We are grateful for your support and encouragement over the years as well. The growth of the tech center across technology domains is reflective of the evolving automotive industry, uh, which where the concept of mobility has shifted from luxury to necessity to being conscientious in one's choices. The alignment of the teams in the tech center to the group and the India roadmaps to success is irrefutable. No longer do we just need a ride. We need a sustainable mobility solution more than ever before. This has caused a paradigm shift in the technology solution requirements of the automotive ecosystem. The technology transformation underway at ZF is fully in line with these evolving mobility needs. As the changing automotive industry ushers in a new requirements, let's all bring the right competence, passion, teamwork, accountability, and most importantly, talent, to reach the new expectations from our customers. A very warm welcome to every one of you to the TCI Hyderabad inauguration. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Dubon. Now I'd like to call upon, or rather invite, Mr. K.V. Suresh, President, ZF, India Region, to speak a few words. Thanks, Aparajita. Good afternoon, all. Honorable Minister K.T. Ramarao Ramarao Garu, Mr. Jayesh Ranjanayi is Principal Secretary to the Government of Telangana, Amar, who has been our co, who has been with us in the last five years, helping us, and all the ZF colleagues who are in the in the dais and also along with us in the uh, yeah, who are joining us in this event. A great event today, a great day today. As Aparajita said, a seed was sown five years back, and today it has grown into a good demo, good big tree from zero to 2,900 employees, a whooping CAGR of 70% year over year. It's a memorable growth, a splendid one, which definitely will motivate us to grow further. ZF in India has not been a new company. We have been here for decades, started with joint ventures, 
2007, we deep, deepened our roots with our own wholly owned subsidiaries. In two, between 2010 and 20, at, as a part of global acquisitions, we also had many organizations join our family. And today, we are spread across the breadth and the length of the company. As we grew in manufacturing and related areas, it was also important for us to grow both in the technological areas, which included R&D, and as well as software development. And that's when the need of the IT infrastructure and the tech center came in. 2007, March 2nd, is when we started this. And it has become a real significant part of our global software and, tech, uh, and engineering centers. R&D growth is a, is a very clear and important, path, important part and parcel of our strategy for ZF in India. R&D doesn't not only supports the global requirements, but it also supports the local requirements to meet the customer expectations. How is Hyderabad important to us? I know, I started my journey in 1989, part of this career, part of my, as a first step in my career. Hyderabad has grown into a big city, city with commendable infrastructure, which many cities can benchmark in India. And that really helps us to attract talent because one of the important thing is the, the art of living and the importance of having the right infrastructure in the place we are working. So with all these words, I would like to say, I would like to wish you all a great success in your careers in ZF and of course, a very great journey as we grow from, as Hyderabad and Telangana goes from strength to strength. Sir, I heard that you have been beating all the national averages in growth and best wishes to you in your growth. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Mr. Suresh, for sharing a perspective of ZF in India. I now invite Mr. Dirk Adamchik, Senior Vice President, Engineering Services and Solutions, to address the gathering. Good afternoon. Uh, it's a privilege to have the presence of uh, Shri Keti Ramarao, um, Mr. Jayesh. Ranjan, um, and uh, Amana Reddy uh, Atmakuri, uh, our esteemed guests, and all of my colleagues, and I'm pleased to be part of this important milestone today. R&D is key for ZF as a technology company, and so it's a matter of pride to share that this new tech center, India, at Hyderabad, is the biggest software hub for ZF globally, and we will contribute actively um, to the ZF Group's vision of shaping next generation mobility. For the past five years, the tech center in Hyderabad has grown both in numbers and also in projects and capabilities, ranging from active and passive safety, e-mobility to autonomous driving. From an initial handful of engineers in 2017, we have now more than 2,900 associates in Hyderabad actively contributing to our core R&D technology. This new facility, with its over 300,000 square feet, is designed as a place for collaboration and to foster technology excellence with its open design and accessibility, and it's really a great place here. It is um, evident that the mobility segment is changing faster than ever before. Software-defined cars, autonomous driving, and e-mobility are the three main drivers for this change. And interestingly, Hyderabad may be an official candidate for the Formula E racing in the next season. And ZF is strongly engaged in Formula E with its e-mobility solutions. To maintain our competitive edge, we evaluate and enable technologies that help us drive innovation with passion through R&D, including a commitment of 35 million euro investment in the increase of the engineering footprint 
in TCI. And I'm even more happy to share that with the project, the future technology, the talent, the investment, the ZF Group support, TCI will even evolve to become the largest overall tech center by 2025 for ZF. As I close, I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to the Honorable Minister for his support and for the digital ecosystem he has envisioned for Telangana. And I ask my colleagues um, to realize our promise of shaping next generation mobility by making full use of this new fantastic facility. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adam Sheik, for making us feel proud by reminding that we are part of one of the largest tech centers at ZF. I am Omkara, the co-host for the event, and I will continue from hereafter. We have a recorded message from Dr. Wellesser, Senior Vice President, Corporate Research and Development, commemorating this occasion. Let's hear him now. Could we have his video message played, please? Hello and Namaste. I'm excited to connect with you all today. A warm welcome to the honorable guests, Sri KT Rama Rao, Honorable Minister for Industries, Government of Telangana, Jayesh Ranjan, Principal Secretary to Government of Telangana, Amita Desai, the Honorary Consul General, and to all my colleagues from the Tech Center India and across the world. It is good to see you all safe and healthy, especially given that the last two years have been tough, preventing us from social contacts and meetings. Wish I could be there with you to celebrate this month in our journey. But there will be opportunities and occasions in the future when we can meet again. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to the inauguration of ZDF's newest tech center in Hyderabad, which will become a home for approximately 5,000 engineers. We are all enthusiastic that this new tech center India will lead in the areas of electronics, software, mechanical engineering, and cutting edge software technologies for automotive and industrial applications while at the same time, it will be deeply integrated and closely connected with 16 main development centers ZF has around the world. It is no surprise that the Tech Center India is a crucial element in the company's overall software and digitalization strategy. In fact, it is a matter of immense pride that the Tech Center in India is the biggest software hub for ZF globally. It's been an incredible journey, by the way, a journey of growth and development since 2017, when we inaugurated our first facility here in Hyderabad. The TCI teams, meanwhile, are working closely with all ZF divisions. Some of the major areas of work are system and software requirement analysis, software development, hardware design and engineering, mechanical design and simulation, benchmarking and cost engineering, and above all, cloud platform de development, which shows that we're really putting leading edge technologies and relying on the tech center India in Hyderabad. Today's inauguration is made even more special by the fact that the first ZF tech center facility was also inaugurated by Sri KT Rama Rao. His commitment to the development of a digital Telangana and the country gives us further inspiration to continue the path of sustainable growth. Sri KT Rama Rao's vision is evident all around Telangana with the top companies and global research centers making Hyderabad their home. One of our partners since 2019, Microsoft, who we work with on advanced analytics platforms, connected vehicle platforms, and the SQL 2019 are also in the neighborhood, just an eye view uh, away from our new center. ZF's 
Commitment to India is visible in our legacy of nearly 40 years with over 18 manufacturing sites, over 14,000 employees and nine dedicated engineering centers. We have further plans to grow ZF business in one of the largest automotive markets in the world. To support a digitalized and software-centric future, in 2019 ZF Group had pledged an investment of 200 million euro for five years in India. This investment will aid manufacturing, engineering footprint expansion, product launches, hiring and development across all business domains. And I must say we feel very, very comfortable and very welcome in Hyderabad and Telangana. In these times, we are witnessing a great evolution in the mobility segment. The future sectors of new vehicle functions, software-defining vehicles, artificial intelligence, and efficient electrified drive systems are propelled by new customer requirements, by emission norms, fuel costs, and the evolving customer behavior faster than ever before. Today, we are in a threefold transformation with the main drivers in e-mobility, software-defined cars, and autonomous driving. At ZF, we anticipate that by 2030, more than 60% of any vehicle's value will be linked to its software. It will define the vehicles for the next generations. And this future of mobility is based on the new technologies and functionalities that we at ZF are able to provide. Software becomes the key competitive advantage. ZF is also investing in expanding our software capabilities and skills for software development. Therefore, we are excited about the development of Telangana in this direction that creates the talent pool of qualified engineers and software developers that will support our efforts to grow the software and technology offerings in ZF globally. To foster these cap capabilities further, we have several live research projects with some of the prestigious educational institutes in Hyderabad, where industry academia collaboration helps build a culture of innovation, providing the platform for ideation and thinking out of the box for students. But let me also mention, it's also out of box thinking that helps us. It's out of the box thinking of the students for ZF and for the technology development that we need. At ZF, we are ready to step up with knowledge expertise and passion to make a difference in the next generation mobility. The ability of our engineers to work in a collaborative manner across divisions, across technologies, across locations and geographies enables us to provide optimal solutions. And it is fundamental for our future. The new tech center in India is designed to allow such collaboration and to foster technological excellence with its open design and accessibility. At Hyderabad, we have set up an innovation hub to nurture ideas and lead global projects. It encourages our colleagues to collaborate and innovate. As mobility around us evolves and transforms into more than just a means of transfer, software will play an increasingly critical role in ensuring its relevance for the future generations. At ZF, we are building on that expertise to be a leader in a world of software-defined cars. Software first and digital always. Let's continue driving innovation with passion in Hyderabad. Thank you all, and I wish you a good day and a good celebration. Thank you, Dr. Wallace, for that inspiring message. You have clearly articulated how Tech Center Hyderabad will be playing a pivotal role in shaping the next generation mobility. And we are excited to be part of this technological transformation too. Now, let me invite the chief guest, the man himself, Sri KT Ramarogaru, the Honorable Minister for IT, Industries, Municipal Administration and Urban Development for the state of Telangana to deliver his Keynote address. Sir, please. It's an honor. Sir. 
See, all these other gentlemen get invited by a nice girl and then I get invited by a bearded man. Thank you, man. Thank you, Omkar. Agale Sunda? Tinle I think half of you have eaten and half of you haven't, so nice. I, that's all not my fault. In fact, it's all Jayesh Anjan's fault. Uh, I told him the meeting should be at 1 o'clock, but obviously Jayesh had other plans. So thank you for uh, having us. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Omkar. That was a joke, of course. You're a very good-looking man. Um, <laughs> thank you, Aparajita. Thank you, uh, Suresh Garu, for having us. Uh, thank you for this wonderful event. Thank you, Krish. And uh, thank you for our uh, visiting friends uh, from Germany. We have, uh, see, we have a Chris and a Krish. We have two of you on the same podium. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Dirk. Um, thank you, Jayesh. Thank you, Amar. Um, and to all the family of ZF. I think uh, what's fabulous is those numbers that uh, were just mentioned. I don't know how many of you know this, but um, you've just joined a very elite club. You know, Amazon's world's largest campus, world's largest presence in terms of number of employees is not in the U.S., is not in, the, is not in Seattle. It is actually in Hyderabad. Now, ZF's largest technology center being in Hyderabad, you've just joined a league with Amazon, so I think the entire family of ZF <laughs> deserves a huge round of applause. And as Suresh pointed out, uh, that 0 to 70% 70, 70 CAGR is what you said. 70% compounded annual growth rate is stupendous. So going from 0 to 2,900, you know, I think uh, we all dream of our vehicles going from 0 to 140 in like 10 seconds and 5 seconds. I think that's the usual, uh, you know, automobile industry parlance. So this is brilliant, what you've done from 0 to 2,900, being the largest technology center, I think uh, covering over 100, supporting over 100 different uh, locations across the world is a brilliant, brilliant addition. So my compliments to the entire family of ZF. In fact, the, co the conversation started, I, I mean, I'd be remiss not to mention Mamta Chamarthi, who actually facilitated the initial intro, the conversation, wherever she is, Mamta, thanks, uh, thanks to you. Uh, what started, as was pointed out, is a small little seedling, you know, with Suresh, you and all others, has today become a huge, gigantic tree. Uh, and it, I'm, I'm hopeful, because I just heard uh, Dirk say something which was interesting. I'm going to repeat it. <laughs> I think it's not going to stop at 2,900. He just mentioned, you know, you're aiming at 5,000, which I think is going to create 2,000 more jobs in Hyderabad. <laughs> I've just uh, come off another meeting, which was very exciting for me personally, because um, just this morning, we released our annual performance uh, report of the IT department uh, in Government of Telangana. In fact, uh, it's a fabulous story what has happened over the last eight years. Tomorrow, we complete eight years as a new state. Eight years ago, when we, eight years ago, when the state was founded, the IT exports were languishing around 57,000 crores of rupees per annum. That, the previous year, that was 2013-14. When the journey started, it was 57,000 crores of uh, uh, exports and 3 lakh 320,000 people working directly in the IT sector in, in Hyderabad and in Telangana. But now, if you look at uh, the story after eight years, what's impressive is not just the growth in terms of exports, what's equally impressive is the number of employees that have been added. From 57,000 crores today, we stand at 1,83,000 crores. We have actually more than tripled. So it's more than a 300% growth, which is stupendous. And I think one of the reasons why that has happened is because of organizations like ZF and the confidence that they have reposed in Hyderabad, in Telangana, and how you went from 0 to 2,900 over the last five years. I think you guys have been a significant player in that uh, growth story as well. Likewise, the number of employees was about 320,000 when we started. This, uh, as our journey as a new state. Now, it's at nearly 800,000 employees, so almost 480,000 addition, which is stupendous. And let me also tell you one more thing. Last year, our growth in terms of IT exports was at around 26.14%, while the entire national average is about 17%. So we are growing at about 9% higher than the national average. And let me also tell you, let me also tell you, according to NASCOM, last year in India, across the country, about 450,000 new jobs have been added in IT sector, out of which 150,000 came from Hyderabad. That means one-third of the new jobs 
that have been created last year were created in Hyderabad. Just trying to tell you that this is a fantastic city with a vibrant ecosystem, with more and more opportunities for talented youngsters. I think what's important for us to realize is that government of Telangana has not only focused on you know, the large companies like ZF. We've also invited smaller companies to participate in our mobility cluster. We've also been able to forge very interesting partnerships. You know, I was amazed when I met uh, Dirk recently in Zurich and of course uh, Suresh in the initial days to learn about your plans for Hyderabad. You're doing some tremendous stuff from here. You're doing e-mobility, you're working on autonomous driving, you're working on active and passive safety, you're working a number of uh, cutting edge things which are possibly not you know, immediately relevant for India, but eventually I think we'll get there. Because in Indian, India the roads are chaotic, I don't have to tell you. I have to tell you a funny story though. I was looking at uh, the autonomous driving uh, you know, feature here and I was inquiring with your team if uh, that autonomous vehicle is actually being run in India. Because I was a bit scared, you know, just wanting to make sure I don't go in the way of that, right? <laughs> so they said, no, 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 it's in Rotterdam and, uh, you know, in Germany. I said, cool. Uh, I remember one thing, you know, about five, year, five or six years ago when the whole smart city thing was being talked about. Um, there was a, I'll not name names, of course. There was a multinational company from the U.S. They had come in. They said, you know, we have something very cool to offer you. Uh, I have a technology that basically sends an alert to your cops, a message to your cops, if somebody cuts their lanes abruptly. Like if you switch lanes without an indicator, without a proper transition, uh, it can send you a trigger. It can send you an alert. Uh, so I smiled at them. I said, listen, uh, why don't you give me something, you know, which will send me an alert when somebody is coming at me in a one-way street. They were amused. They were like, why would you need that? I mean, it's a one-way, right? I said, welcome to India. Welcome to Hyderabad. <laughs> See, we are, a, we are a very different bunch, you know. We are a very, very different, uh, uh, you know, kind of people. Our driving, our, you know, in fact, um, I think Mark Tully uh, called it very, very famously. I think the two gentlemen here, Dirk and Chris, would appreciate it. You know, India, when you come here and when you hit the roads and when you start driving, you'd be scared initially. You'd be like, okay, there are no lanes. Okay, where, where is anybody headed? But Mark Tully called this brilliantly. He captured it brilliantly. He said, it's organized chaos. That's what we are. We are organized. You would think it's chaotic, but we are very organized chaotically also. So that way, I think ZF will have to write an entirely new set of programming and a new set of code for autonomous vehicles in India. That's the real challenge. If you can pull that off, I think, uh, yeah, I think that would be the eighth wonder, I would imagine. I'm just joking, of course. I'm, I'm just joking. Uh, please, uh, to the press people, I was joking. I was not tarnishing <laughs> India. I was not saying anything to India. If I'm saying anything... <laughs> I'm, if I'm saying anything at all, it was all in jest. I'm not saying anything at all. Otherwise, you know, I'll be called Desh Drohi, anti-national. <laughs> you know, a lot of things will get thrown at me in social media immediately. I'll be immediately expelled from the nation also, possibly. So, you know how it is in India right now. But I don't go there. So, the point is, um, guys, you have a fantastic company that you work with, the fantastic company that you work for. But uh, we have even, even uh, better plans. In fact, uh, we are inviting, we have invited ZF to be a part of TMV, the Telangana Mobility Valley. And uh, the, you have some very interesting partners and interesting company there. You have Hyundai, who's working with us. You have uh, Stellantis, who's working with us. You have Bosch, who's working with us. You have, uh, of course, ZF. You know, it goes without saying. We, uh, and uh, you're in Pune, Suresh, so... Qualcomm. Intel, Qualcomm, Micron, and we also have the, uh, Bharat Forge, uh, you know, the Kalyani Group. So all of these interesting players coming together and creating this mobility ecosystem is something that I'm truly upbeat about because I believe the next frontier, because you know, for India from a jobs perspective, from wealth creation perspective, is in emerging technologies and mobility is one, one very, very important sector. Sustainable mobility, shared mobility, and a bunch of other variants of mobility that people talk about. When I say variant, I'm sure you're all thinking COVID. <laughs> And let me also tell you, our strengths in life sciences, again, are uh, unparalleled. In fact, Hyderabad is home to one-third of human vaccines produced globally. So we are the vaccine capital of the world. So all the ZF expansion plans that you have, guys, uh, you are in safe hands is what I'm saying. You know, you don't have to worry about availability of vaccines and all. And the other thing I also wanted to request, uh, Suresh. Suresh, I know you're based in Pune. I know you love Pune. I also went to school in Pune. I, I did my master's from Pune University. 
I also love Pune. I love Bangalore as well. But I think Hyderabad is the best, without a question. You know? <laughs> I love all these cities. Chennai is also nice. I mean, Chennai is also nice. Uh, they have a nice government, nice people. Delhi, I can't say the same, but uh, I think um, they're also nice people. The government is not okay. They're okay. So Hyderabad is that location, Suresh, where you will get the best bang for the buck. Uh, I know that uh, you, you just told me that for future manufacturing that you would have us in your plans. But for that, you have to come here, see us more often. You know, with Krish, you have to talk more often. We have to bring you to our brilliant biryani and brilliant Halim here. We have great stuff, by the way, I have to tell you. You'll not get that in Pune, for sure. Um, so all of this is what makes us what we are, you know, a brilliant city. Uh, communal harmony is intact, you know, no nonsense here, no halal, hijab nonsense. We are focused on getting work done. We are focused on business. We are focused on economics, not politics. I think that's important, guys, because it's important for us to realize a country like India cannot afford to have politics supersede economics. If we have to create wealth, if we have to create jobs, if we have to really aspire to be the best in the world, there is no, no substitute for any government but to focus on economics, wealth creation, job creation, and not nonsensical propaganda alone. You know, politics can happen every once in a five years. We can fight. We can, then we can let people decide who gets to do what. But the remaining time has to be complete fo completely focused on governance, delivering you know, good governance, and ensuring that we create wealth for the nation. The reason why I say this is because, you know, each and every time I travel, you know, I was in Davos recently, I went to the World Economic Forum, from there I came to Zurich, I met uh, Dirk there, and then I flew back, I went to London for a day, picked up my family and then came back here. Each and every time I visit any country uh, abroad, and I'm sure most of you do the same as well, especially after COVID, I'm sure most of you are on that revenge tourism mode and a lot of you want to travel, you know, each of you is posting an Instagram about wanderlust, you know, I, I know all that. So each and every time I visit any other country, I feel really bad. I come back with a mixed bag of emotions. You know, this great country of ours with amazing talent, amazingly talented people, amazingly talented think force, uh, who has the ability to produce leaders for the rest of the world. We have our own Indian guys running Microsoft, you know, which is not too far from here. We have our own Indian guys running Google, which is also not too far from here, their second largest campus. We have them running IBM. We have them running Twitter. We have them running so many. I, can, I think I can count about 52 different large multinational companies which are being currently run, uh, which are being currently run by uh, uh, people of Indian origin. Now that is the talent of uh, India which the world admires. But each and every time you go abroad, you see all these amazing people doing amazing things, amazing Indians doing amazing things overseas. And then you come back, you start thinking. I think all of us also need to think. Back in 1987, you know, India and China, I mean, in terms of sizes, population sizes, we are almost the same. We were, there, we were thereabouts. Even now, I think they're possibly 5 or 10 percent bigger, but uh, we are thereabouts. Back in 1987, 35 years ago, India and China, our GDP was exactly similar, $470 billion. Now, you cut to 35 years later, their economy now is about, their GDP is about 16 trillion. And India is still dreaming, you know, about 5 trillion economy. Where did we miss the bus? What happened? If we were of the same size, we had the same potential, then how, how is it that in 35 years later, how is it that after 35 years, China is the second largest economy of, after the United States, and we are still dreaming of that 5 trillion. It's because they got their priorities right. It's because they decided that they will focus on economics. It's because they have decided that they will create wealth for the nation. They will contest and compete with the best in the world. They are not content in competing with India. They decided that they will compete with Germany. They decided that they'll compete with US. They decided that they will compete with the best in the world. And where did, where did we go wrong? We decided that we will compete with Pakistan. We decided that we will be happy competing with Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. And look where we are. Isn't that a brilliant, uh, brilliant uh, uh, sort of a benchmark to have? We want to take pride in beating Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and Afghanistan. Then we are doomed. We are never going to be in the first world. We'll always have to go ho have a holiday elsewhere and not 
in India. That's that's an unfortunate reality. So therefore, that's why I say politics can wait. Economics has to take center stage. India has to go bold at least for the next one decade or two decades and, you know, aspire to get right up there, compete with the best in the world. And then we can do lots of other things, lots of other nonsense, which I'm sure they're, they're doing in Germany as well. A lot of right-wingers, left-wingers fighting each other. All that can go on forever. So my humble appeal to all of you, focus on job creation. Focus on doing more cool stuff from ZF uh, Hyderabad. In fact, uh, we should have more and more Germans coming here to learn from you, Indian guys, you know, on how to do the best engineering, you know, for their automobiles. I think German engineering is world class. We all know that. The Beamers, the Mercs, and every other product that we love in India as well and across the world as well are all German. Their engineering prowess is well known. But let's compete. Let's actually create new benchmarks from this ZF facility in Hyderabad so that not only Dirk and Chris, but the entire ZF team will come here, learn from you guys, and appreciate you for your talent. So all the very best. Thank you. Jai Telangana. Thank you so much, Shri K.T. Ramarao Garu, for such a wonderful message. I can see that you have started hugging us with your words like organized chaos. And then you started aspiring us that Hyderabad is the best. And then you started making us start watering our mouths with Halim and Biryani. And then you continued paving our vision and path for all of us. Now I understand the definition of leader standing in front of this podium just before me. Thank you so much. Now please join me welcoming our Vice President, Head of ZF Tech Center India, Mr. Jamunadan on to the stage to give his word of thanks. Uh, good afternoon all. Uh, warm welcome and uh, greetings to Sri KT Ramarao Garu, Honorable Minister, to Mr. Jay Shanjan, IAS Secretary, Government of Telangana. I hope you can hear me better now. And Mr. Amarnath, you have been a great support for us in interacting with us. I think uh, this we have assembled today and I want to give a vote of thanks on behalf of the entire team, both who are here physically, I can see it's a large crowd, probably a record that we have achieved today after two years of COVID. Yes or no? Yes. Thank you. And. Uh, I have, I have assured Doug that we'll have the same crowd every day. Thank you. <laughs> okay. That's nice of you. Thank you. And also, it's, a, it's, it's something that we have also learned with the government of Telangana of how we are supported through the COVID. So that's one part. Again, it is also being beamed online. So all of you have a look at what we are achieving. And in fact, on behalf of the entire team in Tech Center India who are present as well as viewing online, I would like to thank all the speakers on the dais and also the leaders who have been giving the messages today. And I am very grateful to Sri Ram, KT Ramra Garu because earlier today I had the opportunity to be part of the annual report. And as he mentioned today, it is the two key parameters that we are looking at. How much of an export? The export, as he mentioned, is about 9% more than the average. And sim similarly, in terms of job, direct job employment, we are one third of what India has generated. And that is for a state that has been in seven years in existence, eight years in fact, tomorrow is the ninth. So that's where we are coming in to thank KT Ramaragaru to give all this information and uh, to take us forward in this. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the global engineering leaders who have been the key for us to be successful and setting up the business here. And above all, the engineers, the team that you have shown up today in full might. And this is something that we are looking for because without which this facility doesn't exist. I would also like to thank the officials of the Vishakhapatnam Special Economic Zone, Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India. You know we have moved from a different SEZ facility to here. They have been a great support all through. I would also like to thank the Telangana State Government, the Police Commissionerate and also the SEC agencies because all of us remember it was in the period of 2020 that we were trying to move and try to work from home. It was at that time, it was very, very crucial that we provided support and it is not just at that time. Even during peak of COVID or any time, we have always got the support from the state government. In fact, that's something we mentioned when we had the consulate uh, general discussions with the German embassy. So that's something. We want to thank 
Telangana government again for that support and continued support. We want to thank Mrs. Phoenix and the associates, JLL, CBRE, and all our partners for allowing us to have this facility become a reality. I would like to thank all the industry leaders, representatives from NASCOM, whom we have been very closely working and helping us to establish the center here. And also the members from the Engineering Institute, because this is something that we have started recently, building on the innovation up that Dr. Valiser spoke about. So that is something we want to thank them for being here and supporting us. Most importantly, we want to thank all the media friends. I hope you captured all the bites, both on and off what Dr. Kitty Ramaragaru said. Finally, I would like to thank our ZF colleagues in engineering, support functions, and as a team from Region India, from different locations, who have come in to make this as a big event and to make this inauguration successful. Finally, I would like to close this with a wish to KT Ramaragaru and the entire team of Telangana and the people in Telangana a very happy commemoration day or formation day, ninth formation day tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jambunadhan. As a token of our gratitude, we would like to hand over a sapling each to all the distinguished guests in line with our sustainable